Hello everyone, my name is Balaji. In this video, I'll show you how to detect brute force attack using stream stats. First, let's understand what is stream stats. Here is the documentation of stream stats from Splunk. Let's look at this. It is saying that adds cumulative summary statistics to all search results in a streaming manner. The stream stats command calculates statistics for each event at the time of event is seen. For example, you can calculate the running total for a particular field. I'll explain what it is in a moment. The total is calculated by using the values in the specified field for every event that has been processed up to the current event. For example, let's say we have five events and we want to calculate count for these events using stream stat. As per the definition here, it is saying that adds cumulative summary statistics to all search results in a streaming manner. For example, if I just say stream stats count, usually if I just use stats count, it will just return only one record or one row. It will have the count is five because we have five events here. But if I use stream stats count, what it will do, it will first encounter with this event. As soon as it encounters this event, it says that count field is one. And next event will be two because this is the second event. And this one is three. And this one is four. And this one is five. It calculates until it sees the last event. Let's run this search and see. Okay. Now we have a count field here. You can see one, two, three, four, five. To understand whether this is adding count to each and every event, let's use table underscore raw and count. You can see here this is the first event it adds count one and second event adds two the same way it adds until it's seen last event stream stats count doesn't make any sense here i'll show you how to use stream stat in detecting brute force attack it supports all the functions that are supported by stats and event stat let's have a look at here we can see here the functions which are supported by stream stat or aggregated functions event order functions multi-value stats and chart functions let's go back to our search to see sample events which are used in detecting brute force attack these are the sample windows events i have collected and i have formatted for demonstration purpose here as i didn't have actual windows events to showcase you can see here 4625 4625 4625 4625 4625 to understand what is brute force attack is for example i know one user of a particular company and i don't know the password of the user i would like to test with a different or multiple passwords to see if I succeed with the authentication. If I just open facebook.com, you can see here, for example, if he knows email address of someone and you want to try some random passwords, you could try. Since brute force attack is very common, most of the companies, they have their own direction to identify brute force and after identifying the brute force, it will not let user to enter passwords further. Let's try here, for example, ABCD. I don't know. I don't think there is an ABCD username or maybe let me try my username. You can see here the password you have entered is incorrect. Forget password. So I just made one wrong password entry. Let me add one more. Whenever we enter wrong password in the server, we can see one entry. After entering three wrong passwords, we got a different page saying that the password you entered was not valid. It is asking reset my password or try again. As I mentioned before, most of the companies, they have their own detection to identify brute force attack. But in case if you want to identify brute force attack using your Windows event logs, or maybe using your Linux secure logs, the SPL, which I'll just show you, would be useful for you to detect brute force attack. Let's go back to our search. These are the results I have. We can see here, there are 4625 and 4624. 4625 is when user is failed to authenticate 4624 is event generated when user is successfully authenticated to any Windows server or PC. I know many of the people or many of the Splunk admins, they calculate number of fail or number of success. And if they see, for example, five fails, they'll consider that as a brute force attack and create an alert. But there could be scenario that one successful login, maybe after some time, one failed login and one successful login on one, one failed login, something like that. But if you calculate number of failed events and number of success events, it will be almost same. Or maybe one account might be configured in different places, Outlook in mobile, or he might be using his account to log into PC. Whenever his password is expired, he uses right password in the PC. He might have forgotten to update password in his mobile Outlook. He might be seeing failed logins from there. And whenever he logged in into PC, he might be seeing successful login. So what will happen if you just calculate based on the number of failed logins and number of successful logins? You might be seeing one successful login there from PC. And you might be seeing many failed logins from the mobile Outlook application. So by just calculating failed logins and successful logins, you might be thinking that, okay, for this user, we have seen many failed logins and there is only few successful logins. This could be 
possible brute force attack, but that creates many false positive alerts in Splunk. The right way of doing or detecting brute force attack in Splunk is to follow timestamps. For example, here we have seen there are continuous fail logins 4625, 4625, 4625, 4625, 4625, and 4625, 4625, and there is 4624. If you look at this timestamp, all 4625s happen before 4624. So this could be one of the brute force attack. Let's look at the search to identify brute force attack in a sequence manner, rather identifying using number of fails and number of success. This is the query I have to detect brute force attack which follows sequence like there could be multiple fail logins continuously and there should be a successful login after multiple fail logins. Let's look at the events. These are the sample events I have here to demonstrate brute force attack. You can see here at 7.50 pm user Bob failed on this destination and just ignore the count for now and again after just a second there is one more failed event. Likewise there are five failed events before success. Look at the time we are following the time sequence also. How are we saying there are five failures before success because by just seeing the timestamp. Now let's understand how we can detect brute force while following the sequence. Let's understand each command one by one. What I am doing here I'm using stream stats here, global equal to true. That means whatever the events are there in that particular time range. For example, here I'm choosing all time because I have only eight events in total. Maybe you want to detect brute force attack by using last one hour events or maybe two hours events. In that case, you can choose one hour or two hour based on your requirement. But here, let's understand what is global equal to true. Global equal to true means we are telling Splunk that look at all events, whatever the events are available during the time range. Here, I have only eight events. So while calculating stream stats here, it will look into all the events. Let's go back to stream stats documentation and see what is global equal to true. So it is saying that used only when the window argument is set defines whether to use a single window global equal to true or to separate windows based on the by class. If global equal to false, and window is set to non-zero value, a separate window is used for each group of values of the field specified in the by class. Default is true. So there is a dependency on the windows attribute. Let's look at windows. What is it saying? So it is saying that specifies the number of events to use when computing the statistics. Default is zero, which means that all previous and current events are used. As explained before, before applying this stream stats, we have total eight events. So this stream stats will take all events because window is zero by default. And we are saying that global equal to true. That means look at all the events. Let's understand what is count. Before understanding what is count, let's look at by class user action. So what we are saying here, look at user action. If user and action is same, create a count. For example, here, Bob failure it will display count one. Bob failure, again, we have seen same kind of aggregation, Bob and failure. It will display count two. And again, Bob failure three. Here, Bob failure four. Bob failure five. Here, Bob and success. This is different than Bob and failure. What it will do, it will again start the count because in the by class, we are saying that whenever you encounter this value, same values, you just create a count and then here it stops here count with five here it will start again because we have seen same kind of values for user bob for your action failure so here it would be seven sorry six and here it would be seven since we are saying current equal to false that means whenever you encounter first event with this match make it zero count from the second event i'll explain why we are doing that in a moment so what will happen it will create in the first row count will be zero we are overwriting the first count, this count, with our count because we are not going to use this count anymore. So let's run this one. As I explained before, you see here for the first row, count is 0, and the second one, you can see start, it's starting with 1. And whenever there is a different match for user action, it again starts with 0. And again, if it encounters with the same set of values as before, it is incrementing the count. I have already shown here how stream stats count work. The only difference here and here is here we haven't used by clause, but here we have used by clause. Whenever we use by clause, it calculates by using these two fields. Otherwise, what will happen for this stream stats? all events are same. If we use by class only whenever there is a same user on same action that event is same. For example we can see set of same events by looking at this user and action based on this stream stats definition here. Now let's look at next command. Our goal is to display success event whenever there are more than five continuous failures and if there is a success. So in the final we have to display this record or this event. Let's understand what is this doing. Global equal to true same I explained before and current equal to false and here I'm doing last of count as last count based on the user. So now it will ignore action. It will only consider user. 
because we want to identify brute force attack for a particular user there could be multiple users and if there is any brute force attack against any user we need to identify in this case here we have only one user but still we are using based on the user i'm saying that current equal to false mean whenever you encounter first event don't perform any action that's the reason if you see the values which is generating from this command are empty you can see last underscore count is the one field which is generated by using this statement and last underscore action is the second field which is generated by using this statement you can see these two fields are empty in the first row because i mentioned here current equal to false and next row what it is doing i'm saying that get me last count as a last count you can see here while it is calculating second event you can see the cursor is here in this position now while it is looking into the second event last count would be for this event is zero you can see here zero came here and last action would be this one this came here the same way you can see all values here here you can see success because for previous event action is success and we are seeing success here now let's look at next statement this is a filter condition to find out brute force it is saying that last action should be failure and action should be success the reason for calculating count last action and last count we know that just by looking at these events we know that okay there are five number of failed event and there is success event and we know that we can directly pick it up but splunk doesn't know right so that is the reason what we are doing we are calculating extra fields to identify brute force attack using first stream stats what we have done we have identified number of failures or number of successes for a particular user we have seen here total one two three four five six seven values are there since we are ignoring first event we have six in total because we are starting count with zero so that's the reason we have six failures and one success is there there could be many successes after that but we are interested only in first success after certain number of failed events so that's why i told timestamp is very important let's say you are taking one hour events or two hour events in the one hour events you might have multiple scenarios like this like five failures and one success and again five failures and one success but our goal is to identify first brute force attack even in that particular one hour events or two hour events for that if you use stats command it will automatically sort the event in the ascending order you can see it here so now we have total seven fails and one success but to identify successful brute force attack we need to understand what is the previous action for that particular user that is the reason i have collected previous action of that particular user in the same event so now i can apply where action equal to success we are actually looking for this event and previous action should be failure we cannot compare what is the previous action with the current action in Splunk. So using stream stats, I'm getting last action to the current event. When I apply filter here, such action equal to success, it will only show this event. It will not show other events. So to understand what is the previous action, I used another stream stats here to get last action to the current action. You can see here failure. And I want to make sure that there are five failed events before this success. Then only I want to display this event or this record. If there are only one or two failed events, I don't want to display. Maybe there could be some, some reason for that. But here I want to identify the event which is success and there are four failed events for that same user and that success should be first event that's why in the first stream stats i applied based on the user and action it counts if there is a success it will change the count and it will start again from starting you can see zero now if you look at such last action equal to failure our goal is to identify this success now we are saying that action equal to success give me action equal to success and last action should be failure and last underscore count greater than equal to four my goal is to identify if there is a success followed by five failed events so now to do that since we started values here starting with zero four equal to five that means if you see four here that means there there were five failed events so now if i run this one it will just give me that particular event as a splunk admin i know that okay last count is four when analyst is analyzing this by seeing last underscore count maybe he is not aware so what i am doing i'm creating a new field using eval command that just add one to the last count because we have started count from zero the actual count is five since we have started with zero it is showing last count four now if i just run this it will show failure count five we can clearly see here this is the time when user bob successfully authenticated and this is a signature id 4624 this basically shows that user is successfully authenticated to this particular server or pc before happening this there were five failed events for the same user let me remove unnecessary fields that last underscore action we don't want last underscore action anymore in the results and last underscore count and count also we don't need anymore after removing those fields the results look like this this is how you can identify successful brute force attack that follows a number of failed logins using stream stats try this and comment if you have any queries in implementing this use case thanks for watching please like share and subscribe for more videos